So reception on the previous video was actually much, much better than I expected considering I've never made Fire Emblem videos before. So I figure since it was so good, why not make more Fire Emblem videos? I hope I will not regret this, but for now, there are a lot of cool things you can do in Fire Emblem Engage and I am happy to make some videos showing these things off. Please note that I do not consider myself a master of this game by any means. I actually only played on hard mode because I was not anticipating spending too much time with the game, but I'd like to think I have a good knowledge of the system and hopefully I'm able to help you out nonetheless. Today I figure we can take a look at the Micaiah Ring. This is my pick for probably the best emblem ring in the entire game. The abilities of this ring grants are unable to be replicated by any other ring or any other ability and can allow you to beat some maps very quickly in addition to comboing very well with the holdout skill. In this video I want to discuss the application to the Micaiah Emblem Ring and show you how to effectively use Area of Effect Warps and how to create a pseudo tank mage for at least 4 turns that won't die. Unless they get doubled or attacked by longbows, but let's not worry about that. If you enjoy RPG guide content, and especially the Xenoblade series, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it does really help me out so much. I will likely continue to make a bit more engaged content after showing this off, because I have some other cool strategies that I'd like to show off as well. Let me know what you think of the video as a whole and if it was actually helpful. This video should not have any story spoilers in it, but it might have some later maps, so be warned. Let's get into it! I want to talk about the ring in a more general sense first and explain exactly what you get access to when you use this ring. The first major thing the Micaiah Ring offers is the ability for any unit that equips it to use staves. This can be very useful earlier on in the game and even later in the game if needed since staves are very nice in this game and have a number of unique and useful effects such as Obstruct which can limit enemy movement, Freeze which stops a unit in place, Warp which lets you teleport a unit up to 5 spaces, and Entrap which brings an enemy unit to you. Having extra units who can use staves can always be beneficial in this game. That said, a lot of the stat bonuses Micaiah offers are more beneficial for magic based characters than may already be able to use staves, and if this is the case then that's not a huge deal. The later version of the skill can grant up to A rank staves, and even magic classes that can use staves may not normally be able to hit A rank, giving this a solid niche even still. Regardless, staves are great in this game, so giving access to staves no matter what is still very nice. Perhaps the strongest ability Micaiah offers, however, is the Augment ability, which is exclusive to her ring and requires it to be active. This increases the range of all staves by 5 and increases the area of effect by 1. This is an absolutely incredible effect for every type of staff in the game. This means you can heal units from up to 5 additional spaces away, which is great for staves like Mend, which usually require you to be right next to your target. It also means that any unit standing next to the unit you are healing on either of the four sides will get healed for the exact same amount because of the area of effect. This can allow you to heal multiple units at once with only one character, which can be very nice. You also get increased experience for every unit you heal, making this a nice way for staff users to get some additional experience. The ability to heal from further away is always beneficial for a healer if they need to keep their distance from the front line or just out of range of dangerous enemy units. Additionally strong about Augment is it isn't just healing that it affects, but every single staff effect. This means that Obstruct could be used to create multiple impassable tiles to block enemy advances that could be dangerous. This means Freeze can target up to 5 enemies to keep them stuck in place for a turn. This means you could entrap multiple enemies. It even means you can warp multiple allies at the same time, which can become very crazy very quickly. And don't forget that it also increases range by 5, meaning you can do all of these things or even further back, or reach enemies further in the map, or even warp your characters a greater distance. This is such a powerful effect and really does make Micaiah one of the strongest emblem rings just by this alone. Another powerful, unique ability of Micaiah is Great Sacrifice. This will heal all units on the map fully regardless of how far away they are, at a cost of making the HP of the unit who used Great Sacrifice equal to 1. This is a universal global heal which is super powerful, especially if you find yourself with a lot of low health units in a dangerous situation. Experience from using it also scales based on how many units are healed, meaning you can get massive amounts of experience using this, even if you're only healing 1-2 to two health per ally, at least early on in the game. Health experience seems to decrease as you get further in the game, obviously. As long as they are even slightly injured, you will still get this additional experience for them being healed. This is one of the best ways early to gain a ton of experience on a unit and can definitely be a good application if you have a way to heal the Great Sacrifice user. This can only be used once per engage, but you can squeeze out multiple per map, it can get crazy in a hurry. Also, a full global heal is just fantastic in general in a game like this. Great, great ability. Many of the remaining abilities are pretty nice to have such as Healing Light which heals the user 50% when a staff is used, having Magic called Shine which illuminates annoying Fog of War maps that no one likes, and having a strong effective damage Tome and Thanny, which is probably guaranteed to one-shot armor units and cavalry since they don't have amazing resistance to begin with. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The final tome Micaiah grants is called Nosferatu, which I want to talk about next because I think this tome is very powerful, and this is one of the lesser-known applications of the Micaiah Bond Ring. So 
So Nosferatu is a 1 to 2 range of magic tome that heals for half the damage you deal with it. It isn't the most powerful tome in the world, but there aren't many ways to heal by attacking in this game. As far as I'm aware, only this and the Diamant exclusive soul ability allow you to do this, meaning most healing comes from staves or items. This tome is particularly nice because as long as the attack hits, it always works, which isn't the case for soul, which requires a dexterity percentage roll. Because of this, there's a very useful application that can be employed by any character with high magic and dexterity that is using the Micaiah Ring. If you can save up your skill points to get access to the holdout ability from the Roy Emblem Ring, you can create a unit that for four turns is very difficult to kill, especially if they have enough speed to not be doubled. The way the holdout ability works is that if you have more than 30% of your health remaining, you will survive with 1 HP if you are attacked no matter what. If you inherit further levels of holdout, this goes down to 20%, then 10%, then finally just as long as you have 2 HP or more. Typically, if you're using this on a mage with a low defense stat, even the first or second level of this will be enough to have it apply pretty much all the time. Essentially, with Nosferatu Tome, you can heal up to above the health threshold for holdout to take effect every time an enemy attacks you, essentially making it very difficult to kill the character using this strategy. It works pretty effectively to create a mage face tank that only really has to fear long-range units, units with very high speed or missing an attack, which hopefully won't happen. It may not be the most foolproof method, but it can be nice to get a mage more involved in the front lines or bait units to attack a character that can chunk a lot of health from lower resistance units. I found it to be a pretty fun and effective strategy on certain maps, especially when warp and rewarp strategies are involved. Now, I wouldn't say this is a foolproof as just perfect evasion like Yunaka or something, but at least maddening AI won't ignore you at the very least. This is still a risky strategy for reasons mentioned, but it can definitely shore up defensive gaps and holes in a party formation if you need to protect a unit for any reason, or just want to bait out a few units that aren't really a danger to kill you. Do not rely on this to solo maps, just use it as a very powerful option. Perhaps the strongest and most useful application of the Micaiah Ring is warping. If you know a bit about Fire Emblem, warp strategies have traditionally been some of the best strategies in the game. At first glance, it looks like it was nerfed in this game, with the warp staff and rewarp staff only having 5 range. But Micaiah fixes this by increasing it to 10 range and arguably makes it even stronger by making both staves area of effect. Rewarp would normally only affect yourself, but now it can affect up to 5 people, including all 4 allies next to you, while Warp can warp up to 4 people with your target and the 3 allies on the other 3 sides of them. Rewarp in particular with Micaiah can do some absolutely crazy things, since you could use a dancer to allow yourself to rewarp again, covering a crazy amount of space in a single turn. This can help a lot if you're trying to approach ballistas or get to bosses without taking a ton of damage or putting your units in danger. It is one of the absolute most effective strategies for ending maps as quickly as possible, if that is your goal. And even if that is not your goal, it's still something that is very impactful. Just check it out on a leaf map. A lot of people consider this to be one of the toughest maps in the entire game because of the ballistas, the enemies approaching, and some other reasons. I'm not going to show the entire map, of course, but I'm going to show how on turn two you can easily get to the ballistas and put yourself in pretty minimal danger, even with the dancer in front of everyone. So we're able to warp on one of these turns. And then we're able to warp again on the exact same turn. Which means with rewarp, after we dance the, our warper, we just approach the ballistas straight up with another 10 range warp essentially. And this allows us to just kill all the archers in the area, make sure they're not going to be a threat. These ballistas hit very hard, so just being able to do this can be very beneficial to having a much easier time with this map. You can also do this to get to on the other side of the map. It's just a very, very powerful strategy. You can also do this to do a lot of boss skips, especially in a game like this, if you just want to approach the boss as fast as possible with like a couple powerful units to take out the multiple health bars that the bosses have. I think this is just a really strong and broken strategy. Everyone probably that's really familiar with Fire Emblem probably knows how strong warp has been in the past, but being able to warp multiple people at once, being able to dance your warper to warp again, those are really, really powerful abilities. You can even team this up with the Byleth Ring, which has a four-man dance. And if you do that, you could potentially warp up to four times in a single turn by warping, dancing, dancing your dancer, and then warp, warping it one more time, and then dancing again with your dancer after you warp. And make sure Byleth also dances the warper and the dancer at the same time. So you could get up to four uses of warp in a single turn, which is pretty stupid. Don't forget you can even combo this with other staffs like Freeze or anything like that, which could be pretty useful, and those will have area of effect range as well. If you're in that kind of position now right here i'm not in that kind of position there's these enemies are not right next to each other sadly but i am able to freeze one of these enemies that have loot on them so i'm able to go catch up to them a little bit easier later on and i can use uh, my sigurd ring chloe to take out the other one which means i get all of these items without too many issues 
So then Micaiah's Staff Extra Range is just coming in clutch because of that as well. There's just so many useful applications of this. You can even do AoE Rescue. You could do a Warp and then a Rescue at the same turn even if you want to, such as maybe Warp in, have some characters attack some enemies that you don't want to deal with, and then rescue your characters right back out to have an easier time dealing with the map later on. There really is just so much versatility and so many applications of this that you can consider doing, and I find this to be one of the absolute strongest mechanics in the entire game. Now, I don't really know if there is too, too much left to say about this. Warping is just really, really strong as a strategy in general. Micaiah makes it very strong by increasing range and allowing up to four to five people to warp at once, which I find to be extremely powerful. Dancing helps too. It's just a really effective strategy. You don't even have to use it to cheese maps. Like in this last example here, I just use it to get access to these treasure chests so I don't have to just multiple split my party members up too much here. I can rescue out everyone except for Yunaka, as you just saw earlier, and there's not too much issue for me. I'm able to get these treasure chests without too many issues. I think that's going to cover it for this, though. I don't really think there is too much left for me to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was informative to you. Please let me know if you have any suggestions about what I can do to make my content for this game better in the future, since it's still very new to me. Let me know what your favorite setups with, with Nakaya are. If I did not cover it in this video, I'd be love to hear and learn even more about the game myself, even. And once again, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I will see you back here soon.